There are three color enhancing tricks in Photoshop that you're probably not using right now, but you definitely should be. And I'm gonna explain everything you need to know about them in this video. Now, I'm not gonna be talking about the regular tools like hue saturation or color grading. I'm gonna be talking about some more ninja tips to improve the way you edit your colors and how to get the most out of your different adjustments that you use. These are some tricks I don't really hear a lot of people talking about, especially in Photoshop. So I think you're gonna get a lot of value out of these different techniques. Now, before before we get started, I just wanted to share this cool little thing I got recently. It's a monitor light from BenQ, and it's honestly the best thing that has happened to my eyeballs in a long time because I have two lamps that sit on the side of my desk, and usually they just point straight in my eyes, and they kind of get sore after a while. But then the problem is, even if I'm in a dark room and I'm just staring at my computer screen, they get even more sore. So I've kind of had this problem with getting the perfect light set up for my desk, and this light has seriously helped me so much because it just casts this nice light onto my desk without actually shining in my eyes. It doesn't cause any glare on my monitor and it just comes with this cool little knob here that you can adjust the color temperature as well as the brightness of the light to fit the vibe of the lighting that you're currently in. There's also this little auto mode button that will automatically calibrate the settings of the light to best match the environment that it's in. So if your room's dark or bright or whatever it just balances everything for you. It's so nice to have and I definitely recommend checking it out if you have sore eyes like I do. It also doubles as a lightsaber which is pretty cool. Ben Q sent this light to me just to try out and see how I like it and it's honestly been amazing. So if you want to check it out for yourself, I'll leave a link down below. So the first tip is something using layer masks that blends in your colors a lot differently than just your typical adjustment layer. Now the tool that I think this works best with is the color balance tool. So I'll click on that to add that adjustment layer. And I'm sure you're already familiar with this tool. It just adds some color to your mid-tone shadows or highlights. But by applying your image as a layer mask, you can make all of these colors blend in a lot more realistically without this sort of weird color cast that just takes over your photo. So with this layer mask selected, just go up to image and then down here to apply image. In the box that comes up, make sure your layer is set to merged, blending mode to normal opacity 100% and click OK. Now looking at my layer mask here, if I hold alter option and click on it to view it, this is what my layer mask looks like currently. It's basically taken all the exposures from my image and turned it into a layer mask. And if you're familiar with layer masks, you know that white is 100% visible, black is 100% transparent, while shades of gray in between will represent varying levels of transparency between white and black. So what that means here is that the shadows will get affected differently than the highlights, and then the midtones will also get affected differently as well, depending on their level of opacity. So what this does is is when you go and add these strong bits of color to your photo, it blends in a lot more realistically without it taking over your photo and making it look like you have a filter over top of it. It just makes the colors blend a lot more naturally. Now to give you an example, let's just quickly go through this adjustment and add some pretty strong effects here that you definitely couldn't get away with without this layer mask. So with some relatively strong adjustments applied to these different areas, if I go and turn this layer mask on and off, look at that huge difference that that makes. So this is with the apply image added. And then this is what those same adjustments would look like without apply image. Notice how the entire photo just looks a lot more weird. The colors don't blend as nicely and it looks just very overpowered. But then with that apply image feature, it blends everything in really nicely, but still adds a nice subtle change to the colors in your photo that you wouldn't be able to get as easily in any other way. So this is something that I really recommend using on the color balance adjustment as well as the selective color. Those two adjustment layers particularly work really well with this type of technique. Now deleting that layer, let's talk about the second color improving option, and that's actually with our gradient map. So clicking on the gradient map adjustment layer, what this does is applies a gradient over the entire photo. And by default, this doesn't look very good, but let's go and apply some color to this gradient that we want to have in our photo. So in this image, I want to add sort of some summery warm tones. So I'm going to click in the shadows here, click on the color option, and then pick a nice dark yellow color like this and click OK. And then I'll go to the highlights and add more of a blue color just to give it a sort of summer vibe here. Click OK once again. And then now for safe measure, I'll actually add a third color by clicking in the middle of the gradient preview there. It'll add another color swatch, and now I can add a third color of my choosing. Let's just add a bit of a desaturated orange there, click OK, and now we have this new gradient created. Now obviously this looks awful, so to blend this in, we'll change the layer blending mode from normal down here to overlay, 
or to soft light. Now, overlay will add a little bit more contrast, while soft light will just make it blend a little bit less aggressively. Now what this does is applies those tones from your gradient into your photo to give it a bit more of a specific vibe without having to go and make those colors in other adjustment layers. Now within your gradient editor, you can click on any of these color swatches later on to update the look of your gradient as well as you can change where these color swatches are to make certain colors more dominant within your photo. So for example, right now, by moving the highlight blue down in my gradient, it becomes more dominant and it will become more visible in my image as well. Clicking OK, you can see that now that blue is a lot more dominant than before. Now to take this one step further, you can use Blend If by double clicking on your layer to open the layer styles. With the underlying layer option, you can actually affect which exposure ranges this adjustment is affecting. So for example, let's go to the highlights. If I drag this down, notice how the highlights start to become less and less affected because this exposure range is no longer included. Now I talk about this tool more in depth in another video you can find up in the corner right now, but the basic idea here is that Blend If will help to blend your adjustment a lot better. If I hold Alter Option, click on that exposure range, I can feather that out and basically make those blues blend a little more into the highlights and then do the same thing on the shadows, holding Alter Option, then dragging up like so, and it will just make that a little bit less noticeable. Clicking OK, then turning that adjustment on and off. Look at that huge difference that that gradient map has added to our image because we were able to add custom colors to every exposure range as well as blend them using Blend If. So that's another really awesome tool that I love to use as a final piece to my edit because you can add any type of color style that you want in your photo. It's super easy to do and it works for every type of photo, portraits, landscapes, whatever. So I'll delete that layer and that will bring us into our third type of adjustment, which is found inside of Camera Raw. So before you open Camera Raw, make sure to convert your layer to a smart object so you can access it later on. Right now, my layer is already converted, as you can see by this icon, but you can also just right click and then go to Convert to Smart Object, and that will get you the same result. With your layer converted, go up to Filter and then down here to Camera Raw Filter. And here is home to all of your basic editing adjustments, which I've talked about in other videos, but what we're gonna focus on today are selective adjustments. So the three options you have is the adjustment brush, the gradient filter, or the radial filter, and you can do the same effects with each of these tools. But for the sake of example, let's create a new radial filter, selecting that filter here, and then clicking and dragging out to apply that filter onto my image. Now by default, it's kind of hard to see exactly where your effects are taking place, so make sure to check off this mask option here, and everything that you see colored will be where your adjustments are taking place. I'm gonna change this to red so that it's a little bit more obvious what's going on. Now at this point, if I go and change my exposure, it's gonna change everything inside of this radial filter. However, what if I only wanted to affect a certain color or exposure range within my photo? Well, that's where this little option down here called range masks come in. After your adjustment has been applied, you can go down to this option and choose between color and luminance. Let's first start with the color option. Then click on the sample color option to access the eyedropper and then click on a color you want to edit. So I'll click on the blue sky here. And notice how that red has now changed from everywhere within my gradient to just the blue colors in the photo. Now if I went and sampled her skin, then I'd only be affecting those yellow tones. The same thing applies for any other color that you click on. It'll only affect that sampled color range. I'll just edit the sky for now. With my sample set, I'll uncheck the mask option and then now I can adjust the exposure. I can add a little bit of saturation to that color range or anything that I want because only that one color is being selected right now. So this is really handy if you want to make your subject stand out if there's highlights on someone's skin that are just a little bit too much or whatever else you need to do. This is a great way to selectively edit colors in your photo. And the second way of doing things is with the luminance option. So with my same selection, I'll turn back on the mask options here, this time you can select a exposure range, aka luminance value from your photo. So with your eyedropper selected, go ahead and click anywhere on your photo to sample that luminance range. Now I've sampled that bright area of her skin, so now it will also select any similar exposure ranges in my image. The same thing would apply if I chose a dark area or a really bright area, something like that. Doesn't matter, the idea here is that you are now selecting a exposure range rather than a color. So for example, if I select her skin like so, this is going to select any of the bright exposures in the photo. So now I can easily darken those down by using my exposure slider like so, 
as well as change the saturation or anything that you need to do. This is another great tool, especially for editing skin tones in Photoshop because you can quickly select them. You don't have to do any tricky masking. It's pretty much just sample and you're done. Now, once you're done with your adjustments, you can click OK to exit Camera Raw and then the Camera Raw filter will be found right down here as a smart filter. If you want to reaccess any of your adjustments, you can just double click on Camera Raw filter to reopen all of those adjustments. So with those three color changing tips, you can really control exactly how and where your colors are affecting your photo and it will give you a little more control when color grading your images. If you learned a few things today and you're going to apply these techniques into your edits then make sure to hit that like button down below as it really makes a huge difference to support this video as well as consider hitting that subscribe button to stay up to date with more Photoshop tips just like today. Anyways my name is Brendan from BeWillCreative.com and I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then. <laughs>